And the compensation management module in Interact HRMS is the foundation on which the payroll module is built. So basically, first you set up your compensation rules, and then the payroll uses those rules to calculate the payroll and process payroll and pay employees. So there are other foundation elements, of course, which are the organization management, the employee groups that need to be organized, and the uh, job classification as well as the hiring and employment setup that is required so that we can hire people with the right compensation elements so, and then pay those employees based on that. Even if you're not using our payroll, we would still expect that you want to use the compensation module in order to define a compensation plan for your employees. Now, what does that compensation plan uh, consist of? Well, it will have earnings, obviously, which is your basic salary, but could be many other things too. It'll have allowances. If you offer any allowances to your employees in addition to the regular earnings, it can also have bonuses. You can define your bonus policies the way you want them, the way they work for you. You will have commissions. We have, an, in fact, a separate commission module altogether, but we can also define st straightforward commissions in the, uh, in the compensation module on its own. You will have deductions. Deductions have their own unique behavior. It can be pretty uh, sophisticated. And so you have the ability to define your own deductions. And we'll show you what that looks like in a minute. We also have benefits. There is a benefit module where you can define the rules about healthcare and other types of benefits and investment, uh, retirement and other benefits. But the actual premiums and, and the financial impact of these benefits that's going to be processed through the payroll it requires you to define a code for benefit uh, pay elements that will be used in the payroll. So we have earnings, allowances, bonuses, commissions, deductions, benefits. We also have expenses that you can define and we have taxes. Interact is a global solution. It is used in more than 35 countries, including the payroll itself, one single payroll engine that can be used in all these countries. And therefore, everything is configurable. It applies to all the policy types that I just mentioned, but it also applies to your taxes. So we'll show you some of that setup now. And I'll start off with earnings. And you will notice that many other payroll systems, they are designed whereby you have earnings and other types or other earnings. Whereas in our system, you have specific policy definition areas where you define each one of these pay elements in a different manner because earnings behave differently than allowances and bonuses and commissions and so on. Earnings are typically time dependent, whereas allowances or bonuses definitely are not. They're not based on the time you worked. They could be flat or they could be based on performance or something else. The first thing you will notice is that all of my pay elements or policies have their own currency. So you can have a set standard currency being US dollar or any other currency, but you can actually uh, uh, modify it as at the employee level. So what I'm looking at here is a basic salary, which is an earning that every single employee must have for you to be able to hire them as an employee. But an earning could also be a, a type of overtime. In that case, for example, I have different types of overtime. Overtime during daytime, evening, nighttime, rest day, holiday, on-call type overtime or overtime while you're supposed to be on leave. Any type of earning can be taxable, of course, and an earning could be deferred, which means that it'll be paid only later on. In that case, you will be able to identify when that earning should be paid. You could choose not to include this t type of earning on certain rest days. You could choose to pay the employee this earning before they go on their annual leave. In some countries, annual leave is a very unique type of leave that has its own implications and has its own process behind it. And there is a common process whereby these things are paid when, for people that go on leave. All of the policies in Interact HRMS are effective dated. So you have an effective date and a stop date for that particular type of earning, or it could be left open blank basically, and that means it's gonna apply regardless. Just to point out, as I mentioned, you can apply overtime to a certain type of earning and you can have leave in lieu of pay in case you offer overtime, okay? Which means that 
Well, we won't be paying them the actual overtime. We will give them leave in return for that. And then we can link that with a leave policy and so on. You will see that every definition form that we have for any compensation element always has a similar structure whereby we first define the basics about it and who does it apply to, meaning which organization units, which employee groups, which grades and steps. And then we also define whether or not it's taxable, what is the effective date, and then we get into the calculation method. And the calculation method could be time dependent, which is common for an earning. It could be a flat amount, and it could be based on piecework. In that case, we define what type of piecework units we're going to be tracking. Let's say if you are in a production environment and you're going to get paid not for the hours that you worked, but for the units that you produced. Okay, so then we can we can load instead of a time sheet, we're going to load a deliverable sheet. In that case, we can pay the person based on what they delivered. You'll have an earning rate which could be the deliverable rate table. It could be based on number of dependents or the education the person had and so on. So there's a ability to handle rate tables here. Now, the calculation method could be a function of something. We're not talking about your basic salary anymore, of course. We're talking about another type of earning that might be a function of your basic salary. It could also be something more specific and therefore you can use a formula builder or an expression builder to create that earning and I'm going to show you one in a minute when we look at benefit definitions if we're dealing with overtime then we'll have a daytime overtime rate an evening time a night time and a rest day overtime rate you can apply certain maximum overtime hours meaning you cannot go beyond this number of overtime hours it should be transferred to some other purpose if, if you exceed or it, once you hit that cap of overtime hours, then you will transfer it to be um, recorded or paid as another type of overtime. You can display, of course, your overtime in your automatic timesheet and so on. You might have certain earnings that are not paid when an employee is on a specific type of leave. In that case, you can choose the types of leave during which time you will not pay the earning. And then you can also allocate your time based on a fixed uh, split or based on a percentage and that setup will be done somewhere else uh, we are very strong in labor allocation you can allocate your labor cost based on cost centers based on project or based on contracts and then allocate using a timesheet for example if we look at cost centers, I could go and allocate and I could set up a rule that says that any earning, any basic salary paid to someone in administrative services will go to this expense account and this liability account. And it's going to be another one that we're going to be using for finance uh, people and so on. So this can go very far. We can uh, allocate down to the activity level. If your timesheets include activity information, you can allocate cost for each and every pay element to each and every activity that you're recording time for. And it can be based on the timesheet or it can be based on a fixed percentage split that you assigned from the start. So this is an example of earning definition. Now, let's look at a few others. Let's look at benefit definition. We will have the benefits defined in the benefit planning and enrollments uh, module but you will still need to have pay codes set up in your compensation module so that so that the uh, payroll later on can actually uh, process the correct payments and deductions and so on whatever is the result of this benefit now your benefit definition looks at first sight very similar to the previous uh, definition screen i showed you except that maybe your benefit may be de dependent on the number of dependents as usual there's an effective date you can choose whether you include it in your auto timesheet and in your paycheck the calculation method is very similar too but of course there's a unique behavior for benefits which is that they have rate tables and and maybe health care plan rate tables uh, there might be a ceiling for benefits there may be a target amount 
And there is a accrued amount usually for benefits when you start using the solution that whatever you were doing before you would have accrued some amounts and benefits for your employees. And there is also a split between the employee and the employer who are contributing to this benefit. Typically an, a benefit is often not just provided by the employer, there may be a, a cost sharing by the employee and therefore we have employee and employer contribution split and obviously in the end that cost could be paid to a third party. So again you'll be able to distribute the labor cost of this benefit to cost centers, projects, contracts and so on and you can include this in your FTE costing so you have a clear cost per FTE. Another really important thing is the expression builder right here in the benefit definition but that expression builder exists in every single pay element definition whether it's an earning or a benefit or, an, or a deduction or a allowance or a commission in each case you will be able to to create an expression which is not something an, an end user client would normally do this is something that your implementation partner will do whether it's to interact or a local partner and what you are going to do is you can choose any single table in Interact's database and any field in that table can be chosen. You see all these t uh, fields are plain English and uh, very descriptive so you don't have to guess what it is that you're looking for. If we wanted to add a particular field that is on the employee record then we could find that right here. These are employee record fields. Okay, so there is no limit to the types of functions and mathematical operators that we can use, including if then conditions and so on. There are no limits to the number and type of, of tables and fields that you can access in order to come out with the right expression. So uh, literally there is no limit to how you could calculate something as long as it can be expressed as a mathematical formula. Now this benefit will be associated with organization units and with employee groups and with grades and steps so that the right people are entitled to the right benefits. Keep in mind that this association is there to speed up the process of hiring new people in the system and ensure that the standard policy is applied as per your settings and as per your company policy, it doesn't mean that every individual employee needs to get paid the exact same thing or that they all need to get the exact same policies. That even if you, if there is a policy that says that, for example, everybody is entitled to a gym membership, you might still have a few cases where gym membership is not given because the employee is getting some other allowance instead. And that might be a unique exception for which you're going to modify the compensation plan at the individual level of the employee. So we've looked at earnings, we looked at benefits, let's look at allowances real quick. You will see again the reason why we have these unique definition forms is because every type of pay element has its own unique peculiarities and needs to have some flexibility in it. Allowances again can be deferred typically. There may be a tax exempt amount to a certain extent for this allowance. An allowance could be a non-monetary allowance in which case there may be an accrual process that we need to follow and distribute that cost over different pay periods. And as usual you can use rate tables, you can use user-defined rate tables even if the standard rate table that we offer is not uh, sufficient. As always there could be a time-dependent rule applied which means that the allowance will be prorated based on the hours you worked and it could be a flat amount or an expression or a function of something else. So those are the allowances. Now we've looked at earnings, benefits and allowances. Let's look at deductions. Deductions can be any type of deduction. We're just showing you that this is, that this is entirely flexible because this is a global payroll and a global compensation module. So you can set up any currency, you can set up lots of other conditions it might be a previous pay period excess deduction adjustment. If that's the case, the reason for that is that you have the ability in Interact HRMS to handle previous pay period adjustments. If there was a mistake made uh, in the previous pay period and you need to make an adjustment for that, you can load that adjustment 
depending on the type of mistakes, the system can auto-correct these mistakes for you if, if you provide it with a new basis for calculation, for example. And in that case, there will be an automatic adjustment processed. With all of these definitions, again, there's a calculation method. What is unique about deductions is that you may be able to apply minimum take-home pay rules and you can set deduction priorities because not every deduction is equal, as you know. As per the law, there may be certain deductions that must go first. And on the other hand, the minimum take-home pay rule means that you may set a minimum level that you want to make sure your employees get uh, paid regardless of how many deductions there are in that pay period. So that once you hit that floor, you will automatically roll over these deductions to the next pay period when there may be a bit more room to deduct so that the employee does not fall below a certain level of pay. You have those uh, options and there are settings specifically for how to set up employee minimum take-home pay. Again you can use an expression builder and so on. Now commissions are a whole different type of thing again which means that we can set up commissions in our own manner. That's why we have a separate definition screen for commissions. Commissions can be based on a rate table there can be a flat amount, there could be a, a pay rate per unit, and there's a commission expression. But Interact also has a complete commission module, which allows you to manage and track commissions. And this is going to be associated with products and services. So you will define the type of product that you have, and you can, have, you can set up formulas about how your salespeople will be paid. Uh, with the commission rates and then as long as the sales information is uh, uploaded in the system the system will calculate for you how much commission that, that uh, salesperson is entitled to now what else do we have we have we have bonuses the employee of the year bonus for example the bonus calculation method again has its own uh, manner it's going to be looking at deliverables or time-based uh, measurements and there might be an exemption ceiling. We might be looking at uh, specific performance uh, dependent bonuses. There could be one time or there could be goal based and then we can set up the goal type and so on. So there's a lot of unique behavior which is very different from a normal earning or an allowance or a benefit. Beyond this you will have taxes that can be defined. This will be a separate uh, discussion altogether, but our solution is designed for global use and therefore taxes are configurable. Of course, you can restrict the access to these definition rules so that nobody, no regular user is going to be changing any taxes. The point is that you can set up your rules and this will be used when you're doing payroll where you will have your taxes defined. And lastly, you also have expenses. So, for example, I have hotel, parking, air travel, taxi, and other expenses. And again, you see that these are a little uh, unique in uh, definition because you're typically going to be uploading an expense uh, spreadsheet or you're going to have your employees submit their expense claims through self-service. And then the system will automatically pick this up and handle that in the uh, calculation for the payroll. Now, as I explained in the beginning, the purpose of the compensation management module is to, to provide the foundation based on which the payroll will calculate and process payroll. But it is also there to make it easy for you to assign these compensation elements. So by creating the links between these compensation policies and uh, uh, employee groups and organization units, you are also ensuring that an employee will be uh, provided with the correct compensation elements right away upon hiring. For example, I go and hire a new person right here. Then all I need to do is choose the correct employee group and choose a department and a job title when we're hiring but in the meantime you would have noticed the system has uh, reloaded the remunerations deductions and taxes here and it has gone in and loaded the appropriate compensation policies with their correct amounts if they are flat amounts or if there is based on some other calculation and all I need to do is fill in my 
salary. In this case, it's a salaried employee, part of administration staff. They're paid uh, monthly, so I'm filling in the monthly column right here. And everything else is done for me. All these policies are automatically active for this particular employee because that's what I want there to be. Now, I can go in and modify this and say, wait, we have a, a major exception in this particular case and we don't want to pay certain um, policies. That's fine. You can do that and you're done. Now, this is the quick hire screen, which means everything happens in one screen. The assumption here is that there are no major changes to policies that are required on the spot. Usually there, there aren't because that's the nature of policies. If you've created the right structure, the system should know exactly what type of policy should apply and there can't be too many exceptions normally. But if I want to go and modify any of these policies now, I can do that at the individual employee level. So for Patricia, the new employee that I just hired, you will find that in her job details, there is a single line that shows she's hired as an accountant and accounts payable belong to the administration staff group. But the detail is right here. It shows me different earnings, allowances, bonuses, commissions, benefits that have all been assigned to this individual employee. Now, if I go and look at the detail, I will find that I can modify and say that this particular family allowance that we're providing, the system has applied the standard rules and assigned it to this employee based on the regular setup that you have, including the uh, flat rate that the employee is paid. But if you want to, you can modify this rate. So you can make any individual exception at the individual employee level for any particular pay element. And if there are no exceptions, the system does the work for you. So in order to minimize your workload, it is important to focus initially on the structure that we define and make sure that you, the way that you create employee groups and the way that we create the organization structure is going to support the way that uh, compensation elements should be assigned to employees when you hire them. Now, this is all there is to it. So let me go back one more time and show you an employee record. We will also add a quick picture for this employee. And if we go back to her job record, it will include her compensation data. And apart from all the other benefits, all the other elements that she's entitled to, we will see that in addition to her earnings, she's also getting these allowances, bonuses, and commissions, and everything is presented to me. You notice that the family allowance has been reduced to 150, as I just did, and everything is presented to me in a single screen. Of course, we can run lo lots of reports on this too. Now, this is just one area of the compensation management that is how do we create the policies and assign them to the correct employees. But then we also have the ability to make changes to this, obviously, either individually or through mass updates. So under mass update, you can do any type of change you want. Now, we'll come back to this separately in a separate presentation as it's not just meant for compensation management. The mass update module is something that covers many other items in on the list. But you can see, for example, if you wanted to revoke a specific policy, you created a new policy, you want to assign that to the employees instead of the current one, this can be done in one single screen, whereby you're going to filter and choose the, the correct employees that are affected by it. Uh, uh, you're going to choose the compensation policy that should be affected. And then what is the effective date on which it's going to be made effective and should this apply to a single job only of the employee or in case if they have multiple jobs should it apply to multiple jobs and you can not only assign a, a policy you can revoke a policy and increase or decrease a specific policy you can activate or deactivate and you can make any other changes that you'd like okay so that is done through the mass update module if you wanted to uh, import basic salary increase you can do that too there's a basic salary update 
and that's where we will import a file that will allow us to change anything for any employee in one single process. You can have 5,000 employees salary updated with one single step. You'll have an audit trail that shows you everything that is changing uh, for anyone's compensation and it is in the HR actions that you will make typical changes to compensation. You will not do that as a uh, as an import from Excel or by changing it on the actual employee record. You will process an HR action which will be a workflow driven process for a salary change or compensation change which is entered and then approved by the appropriate people. And once that's done, it's going to be on the employee record and in the history and in the audit trail so that everything is in order and uh, driven by the correct effective date. That's the beauty of Interact HRMS Compensation Management. It is integrated with so many pieces of the puzzle and it is one of the foundation elements on which we then build payroll and other uh, modules.